Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have another user request video. Um, it turns out my Spark videos have been gaining a lot of love um, and people want to see some more specific use cases. Um, and the first one I had was uh, Spark incremental data loading. Um, and in this case, I'm going to choose Snowflake as the database I'm going to incrementally load data into because I still have an active free trial there. Um, but same concepts will apply for whatever database you're using. Um, and then in kind of pairing that, uh, since after you load that data, you're likely going to want to validate that data. Um, I'm also going to show you a data validation script where you can make sure that, hey, the data that I've uploaded into Snowflake matches the expected format that I want it to actually have. So the goal here, just giving you some tools to actually be able to load data, uh, large data files into Snowflake uh, or whatever database you want, and then validate the accuracy of that data. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Um, and if you don't already have Spark and PySpark uh, installed uh, for a local Spark development uh, environment, go check out my previous video on that. Um, and getting started here, the first thing we're going to do, as we do in almost every single one of our data, our videos, is starting with some package imports. So crucially, we're going to need the PySpark uh, SQL Spark session. We're going to need the uh, PySpark SQL functions, import column, and lit. And these are just functions that are going to allow us to interact with that data. Uh, and then I'm going to also be pulling this data from a public API endpoint. So you don't need to have any data ready or accessible. Uh, you can swap that part out for uploading a CSV or a data frame or whatever else you want to upload. Uh, but just to make this easy to follow, I'm just going to use a generic uh, HTTP endpoint. And then we're also going to need a JSON uh, option or import so that we can handle JSON uh, files and interacting with it with uh, JSON loads because that is the format that data is going to come in from an API endpoint. And so once we've got our packages installed, uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, initialize our Spark session. So we'll always need to start your Spark session at the beginning of any Spark script. Um, where here we have a Spark session builder uh, with just calling it an app name, so incremental uh, data loading to Snowflake with the API data. And then the crucial thing is here, so something I haven't done in previous videos is actually uh, setting some config uh, details for being able to connect to Snowflake. So in order to upload data from uh, really any location into a Snowflake environment using Spark, you need to install the Spark drivers for accessing Snowflake. Um, and so in this case, you can copy kind of this uh, Snowflake JDBC driver, which will allow you to install or install a, a Snowflake connection from Spark uh, and you don't need to install this before you create the script uh, because when you create your Spark session, it's going to install this for you um, on that local Spark environment. Next, what I'll do um, is fetch data from a JSON just placeholder API. So here, JSON placeholder .type code post. This just uh, will generate some generic posts that will essentially just act as dummy data. Uh, and just so you kind of see what it is, it's just literal like dummy Latin code or not even code, just language um, with different IDs and uh, just simulating like some social media messaging posts. Um, then once we're done with that, we're going to load that JSON uh, information into a data frame uh, or just into a data file. And then the next step will be uh, converting that API data into a Spark data frame. So what we will do here is add a line that is going to uh, say source data frame equals Spark create data frame uh, using that data that we just loaded from that JSON file uh, with the column last updated uh, as just our uh, kind of ID column. And then using uh, this Spark lit, which just adds a literal uh, or constant uh, object to act as our uh, last updated column since it doesn't actually include that in the data, uh, just we kind of have an ID column. And then the next thing we're going to do is define our Snowflake connection. So what we'll do to do that is create an array um, or yeah, of our JSON or in JSON format of our different Snowflake connection details. So Snowflake URL, account, user, password, database, schema, warehouse, um, and the target ta Snowflake table that you want to upload your data to. Um, and I don't really love that you have to do this uh, with Snowflake or wait for any Spark connection, but this is just how it works. Um, and obviously not going to show you my actual Snowflake connection details uh, here for obvious reasons, but just for, I'll replace all these when I actually uh, run the script um, to upload this data into Snowflake. 
Then what we'll do is read the existing records um, from a Snowflake data table. So in this step, um, what we're doing is just reading the existing records. So this is assuming that you have a table within Snowflake that replicates the data that you're trying to upload, which you would naturally have for an incremental data load. Um, if you want to just add it all as a new table, you can also set up that option. But I always think it's best practices to just create a schema and table within Snowflake uh, that is designed to store this data. Um, so here what we're doing is Spark, reading the format of Snowflake, connecting with our SF options, um, and then what it's doing is pulling our database table uh, from the using that connection into Snowflake and then initializing that as an existing data frame. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is do some incremental data uploading. Uh, so here, what we're doing uh, is you have the uh, ID is a unique, unique ID, and the last updated is the time stay for comparison. So here, what we're doing is joining these two data tables uh, to check, hey, uh, our, we want to upload any, ta any columns or any data that has been created since it's been last updated and last loaded into that Snowflake, or that Snowflake database. So here, again, assuming that you already have some data that you can compare it against, um, so what we have here is uh, defining our, we're joining our existing data frame set, which is right here uh, uh, with the alias existing, then column new ID uh, equals column existing ID. Uh, and what that's doing is just matching uh, the ID of these, uh, you know, kind of dummy social media posts. Um, it, so that the data is arranged on these in the same format. Uh, and then using this uh, left anti-join function to return only the columns from the left data frame for non-match records. So if there's a record that doesn't have a match, only add the columns um, from the new data frame. So this is just going to join only the new uh, information from our new data frame that we just got from pulling from that API endpoint. Uh, then what we're going to use is just uh, dot union. So again, another Spark method for uh, creating or adding these tables together, but here we're defining the logic to say, hey, we want to create a new table joining the existing data frame and our uh, previous data frame, but only where the column um, from the information contained within the new data frame is newer. Uh, it has been updated since the latest update in the existing data frame. Um, so what this will do is incrementally update any new data sets or any new data points uh, without kind of overwriting or uh, adding to the exist or just copying the existing data frames and duplicating any of those entries. Um, so this just is kind of a check against uh, any duplication and making sure that we're only adding data that is new and has only been updated uh, since the last load into our database. Then the last step here is just doing an incremental DF write. Uh, where we are going to write the data that we have just determined is new and has been updated since the last update to that existing database uh, with the format Snowflake, same thing as above, instead of reading, we're writing um, and we're appending all this new data that we just got uh, to that new, uh, to, to that existing uh, database. So using that incremental data frame dot write and then just adding any new information um, into our, again, our existing database. Then uh, what we want to do is actually validate that the data we just uploaded matches the schema of, of that previous, uh, of the existing table. Um, and so this can either be done before or after uh, you've done your incremental loading. Um, so here we have source schema equals source data frame uh, dot schema. So, and then we're also going to check our incremental data frame schema uh, that we just created. So here, comparing again our initial data frame that we wanted to upload into Snowflake as our source schema. And then we have our Snowflake schema, which is being defined by that new incremental data frame schema that we created. Um, and then what we'll do here is just a simple if then check, uh, which is just saying, hey, if the two schemas match, schema validation has passed. Otherwise, it's failed. And then it, what this will do is print the different di differences by just printing out the two different schemas. Um, and this is kind of one way of doing it. Another way that you could uh, do validation is for row count. So if you just want to say, hey, I want to check that, you know, this has uh, the proper amount of rows, data frame, we can do is say, hey, does the source data frame uh, match the incremental data frame dot count? And what this would really be useful for is only if, you know, 
your incremental data frame, you wanted to make sure that it was only uh, adding the fields that you added within that uh, upload that you're making here. And that initial table was empty. Uh, this would validate that, hey, all that data that I was trying to upload was actually uploaded. And here you just have the same kind of row count saying, hey, uh, did this row count pass? Did this row count fail? Um, and another way or another uh, method of doing this too would be saying, hey, uh, does the incremental data frame uh, snowflake row count uh, equal something like, hey, the, so here what it is, add an additional logic. So saying, hey, I want to check that all that data that I just uploaded uh, was actually uploaded and it has now the correct number of rows that joins uh, the previous amount of data plus the new data. I want to check that, hey, uh, did all that new data actually get uploaded? And so here what we do is saying, hey, the snowflake row count, so the total amount of that incremental data frame that's been joined minus the existing data frame count, so that's the existing data frame that we read from that initial table, um, is equal to previous data. And then what you do is set previous data equals source row count. Um, and this will check that, hey, uh, incrementally, all the data that I added uh, within this push um, was actually uploaded properly and has now the expected number of rows. Um, so quick, easy way to do incremental data loading with Spark, and then just a couple different ways that you can perform validation uh, on whether or not that data uh, frame upload was performed properly. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this quick little Friday video on how to do uh, incremental data loading with Spark, and I hope this kind of fits some of the Spark content that uh, you guys have been asking for in the comments. So have a great one. Data guy out.